The president is standing firm on raising taxes on the richest Americans and Republicans. Man, they ticked off. But who will bend? Let's talk about that and more with Angela Rye, executive director and general counsel for the Congressional Black Caucus. Elroy Saylor, co-founder and CEO of the J.C. Watts Companies. Steve Clemens, Washington editor at large for The Atlantic. I don't know why he forgot the pocket square, but he got some funky <laughs> socks on. Some we'll show you socks. later. And Armstrong Williams, political commentator and host of The Right Side. No pocket square. And Elroy finally stepped his game up. <laughs> that little white pocket square last time was horrible. So good job. Good job. He dressed like he's from Detroit. Oh, All, right, out, then. All right, then. So everybody's talking about the fiscal cliff, obviously. Uh, and it's abundantly clear President Obama has made it look. First term, I tried to be Mr. Conciliatory. I tried to be nice. I tried to play along. Now he tried to be more like John Shaft this time. <laughs> I mean, he's I mean, he's making it clear I'm not going to bend to the Republicans' will. What do you make of it? Well, I think that he's doing absolutely the right thing. He's showing that he's not just going to run to the middle and, and do what so many Democrats have done before, is, you know, declare defeat before the battle's been begun. And the Republicans were always in the way of declaring victory before the battle had begun. So he's showing, you know, that he's got some backbone. And, and trying to do something I think is very important is that the divide between average people in this country and the richest has never been greater than it is now. Now, Elroy and Armstrong not had because, you know, their tax is going up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The president should just do what he wants to do. And that is, why don't he just tell us what his real agenda is? Why don't he just declare a wealth tax on the wealthy and tax their assets? That's what it's coming down to. That's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to tax the wealthy, their assets, because he knows that if you tax income, you can never really get that income and you can send it offshore and you can get accounts to hide it for you. That's what he wants to do. In terms of raising tax, Listen, I believe that the president is willing to compromise. I disagree with you. I think his conversation recently with John Bain on the phone has shown that he's willing to compromise on taxes. He's willing to compromise on entitlements. He's willing to compromise on in spending. I think the president and he's Boehner... He's willing to compromise uh, listen, on those things uh, if, if the, the Republicans also listen, compromise on raising taxes. Listen, the Republicans yeah. will compromise. That is why Boehner is being criticized by the leadership in the House and by leading Republicans like DeMint, who just left, and Mitch McConnell, who did not warm to the idea. Look, Boehner has to show leadership. It's not about whether he loses his job. It's about whether he doesn't do his job. And his job is they lost the election in November. It's over. Obama is president. Whether you like the mandate or not, he has to support the president and he has to embrace. And they have to realize they're going to lose more than the president. And that's just the way it works. It's a little hard when you have conservatives like Bill Kristol and Coulter and others who say, look, we lost. Yeah. Suck it up. Just accept what the president wants. Yeah, I think that you've seen a lot here. There's um, everything from a social media campaign called My 2K um, to these anecdotal stories with people that look like you and I and others. And I think at the end of the day, you have to say what's best for the whole of America, not what's best for the top 2%. Um, we just can't afford to continue these tax cuts. Uh, the Bush tax cuts have to expire for the top 2%. There's just no rationale, rhyme, or reason um, to continue them at this point. So um, I do think they lost. And I don't think that it should be looking, it, we should look at it like a, a zero-sum game. This is what's best for the country. Yeah, Roy? Well, a couple of things. One, I mean, Washington doesn't have a, a revenue problem. Washington has a spending problem. I mean, we've heard that over and actually, over again. Actually, Washington also has a revenue problem when you look at, uh, in terms of how the, economy is, how the economy is going. And when you look at the well, fact that the Congressional Budget Office has said clearly that the Bush tax cuts did contribute to our deficit. Well, I still think we've got enough money in Washington. We spend too much of it. Put that in that perspective. Secondly, right. this election. But, but, but yeah. we spent money on a war, which was unfunded. Yes. A prescription drug bill passed by Republican Congress mm -hmm. also cost us money. So and those Bush tax cuts, again, right. contribute to the deficit. So President Obama continued many of the Bush policies that continued to cause well, some war, of the challenges. Afghanistan and Iraq was already in place. Right. So obviously, he couldn't just he stop it. To, he, continued he, to, stop he continued the tax, the tax cuts. Right. He continued the right. wars and he continued the bailout. So a lot of the things that have contributed to some of our, our revenue problem and our spending problem were a continuation of President Bush. So you agree then that the Bush tax cuts are contributing to the problems that you think too? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, but I, I like to look at it holistically, though, Angela, more from tax reform versus how do you tax Group A, Tax B, Tax C. I think we've got to take a comprehensive look at our entire tax, but tax if you look package. At the, if you look at the bottom line, if you get oh, President Obama and Boehner get everything they want, it's $560 billion. It's a $2.7 trillion deficit. It's like spitting in the ocean. No, 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 Unless no, no, they no, do, no, no, oh, no, it no, is. No. See, this, this, this is where we disagree. Because, see, I hate when people use that example when they say it's only a small piece. Anybody who's at home watching right now knows a little bit here, 
a little bit here, a little bit here, all adds up. And so my, but my, so my point there is you have to have you have to have cuts. You have to deal with entitlements. But I also say it can't just be a conversation of taxes and Medicare and welfare. You also must deal with defense. It's talk about holistic. It's, it's to be a broad right? deal. And that, that's my point. But a little bit does help when you put a little bit all to go with a little bit elsewhere. In this conversation, you would believe that the rich, okay, would only pay taxes. But let me tell you something. What Americans don't realize is that 50 percent of what you spend is going towards taxes, whether it's your utility bill, whether it's rent, yeah. whether it's mortgage, whether it's the tolls that you're driving through on Sundays right. or during the week. They're paying tax and now they want to increase those tax. At least at some point, we as Americans are say, make these politicians accountable for their spending. How are they spending this money? There's a lot of waste that can be cut out. And I'll tell you, because the Republicans did a whole lot of spending during the Bush years and they were real quiet as when they were spending that money. But here's the other problem. I think the, the, the president's reelection efforts, I mean, look, he, he's got the bully pulpit again. The, 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 his sales are up the winds are at the winds at his back right now the last poll that i saw showed that 50 56 percent of the american people would blame republicans if we went over this fiscal cliff so the president has a lot of momentum i don't think it's an issue of whether or not we're going to have tax increases in terms of how republicans look at it it's a matter it's an issue of how republicans deal with that issue how they're going to communicate that back to their districts and back to their base in terms of what taxes they raise why they raise them and where are the offsets you know president it's clinton achieved conclusion. the balanced budgets and you and you saw uh, the, the dramatic structural change in the percentage of GDP that went into the federal debt, Bill Clinton reversed that around. It's a major accomplishment. When you look at the Republican administrations that both preceded uh, and came after him, they were huge contributors to the national debt, as at, particularly on a percent of GDP basis. Barack Obama is committed to going back into Bill Clinton land mm -hmm. and trying to get the equation right. Well, at where least he does hit. Republicans were a part of Bill Clinton's success Absolutely. with that. At least admit that. Pete Domenici was an unbelievable yes. leader as chair of the Senate Budget Committee. But I talked to his staff, I talked to Pete Domenici many times during that period, and they were at war within their own caucus, yes, yes. as was Bill Clinton with those, because the, the proclivity to spend in bo on both sides of the aisle yeah. is much greater. And Roland has it absolutely right. The untouchable taboo no one wants to talk about is defense. We just had two well, wars, Medicare, trillions Medicare, of dollars. Social well, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security are talked no, about no, no, a lot. No, 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 no. Defense is not talked about. Precisely. Medicare, defense, Medicaid, Social Security, always and, discussed. And unpaid for wars. And, you know, President Bush's father, George H.W. Bush, he ran that war in the Gulf on a profit. You got the Japanese to contribute $13 billion to the, to the, uh, to the till uh, for that. But you just lost any sense of fiscal responsibility in the wars that we've had now. Well, why don't we go back really to the, the Kenton tax level cuts? Why don't we go back there? Let it expire. actually, we're going to go back to a commercial break right now, so hold on. Yeah, uh, so, I, so I'm going to pay some bills right now because I know you got enough money, Armstrong. So, folks, hold tight one second. We're going to come back in a moment.